Hey guys, we are so glad that y'all are here for this week's episode in the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. We are going to be talking about how your families and where you came from can play a role in your marriages. Hey, I'm Rusty. And I'm Heather. We're the Bryants with Three Strands Marriage Ministry, and this is the Redeemed Marriage Video Podcast. We are here to encourage healthy marriages, strengthen wounded marriages, and begin the process of restoration to broken marriages. We're not licensed counselors. However, we are a redeemed couple that loves the Lord and wants to help you journey through this messy, challenging, and fun part of life called marriage. Hey guys, welcome back. We are so glad that you guys are here this week. I am so excited because we have winners of our contest. Yep. So excited. Um, These came in this week from Amazon and we will be giving these away. And we have a $50 gift certificate to the restaurant of your choice that we are excited to give away to. Um, We were going to draw them live, but thought better about maybe you know telling people's names some people may not want their names done so we put them all on little strips of paper and drew them out and we have our three winners and we will be contact contacting you very soon um to get either one of these books or the gift certificate so super glad thank y'all for participating in that it was great and i know that will continue to help So tonight, we are going to be talking about our families of origin and how those can come into um, play as our marriages grow and develop. Um, I think that a lot of us have this idea um, of what our marriage is going to look like, how how we spend our holidays. Mm how we do finances, Mm -hmm. how we do, what are some of the other, oh, um, how we fight or Mm -hmm. don't fight, Mm -hmm. Um, how we'll raise our children. Yep. I mean, so many different areas. Religion. Yes, religion, how we're going to do church, all the things. Um, We just have all of these ideas of what our marriage is going to look like. Well, the problem with that is our spouse has those same ideas. Our spouse have had has been thinking about those things as well. Or if they haven't, they come in and they have a different idea of what it's going to look like. Yep. Very rarely, I would think, would two people come and have exactly the same right. thoughts on right. everything. Right. So, this is something we never thought about. Mm-hmm. You know, we just, I mean, we thought about those things, but when we came into our marriage, we didn't see that it was going to be a conflict. Mm-hmm. And if no one has ever told you the reason, one reason why marriage is exceedingly hard is because you're a sinner, your spouse is a sinner, and you're trying to make a marriage work. And yep. so there's going to be trouble and there's going to be trials in that process as far as the decision, decisions you make in um, in all of those areas. Yep. And I think that when we got married, we, we probably didn't think about it a whole lot because we felt like our families were really similar. Absolutely. We grew up mm-hmm. um, in the same town. Mm-hmm. We grew up in the same church. So our families, um, I mean, both came from four four people in our families mm-hmm. each. I mean, I had a sister. But you had mm-hmm. a sister. We we're both um, the youngest. Yep. And so, you know, there was just a lot that was very similar. And so we didn't really think about all the little small things that we were bringing into the marriage mm-hmm. because we just, I think, kind of felt like. And I think there are some cases where two spouses are coming together and they know their families are really, really different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could even be, you know, from a different part of the world Mm -hmm. even. I mean, there's there's lots of different things that could, and and I think those people may think about it a little bit more. And maybe even talk about it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, and how we're gonna handle this. Mm -hmm. But, Mm -hmm. But so many are probably more like us where their families are at least similar. Mm -hmm. And so they come in and then all of a sudden it's just like, whoa, my family didn't do it like that. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. um, it starts to create this tension. And I think it's tension that it's not like it all sorts itself out in the first year or so of marriage. I mean, because that's what you kind of would think. Mm -hmm. But it's stuff that you just 
notice as you go along. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, we could we could talk about lots and lots of mm-hmm. things because there's tons of them, and we yeah. mentioned a lot of them, and mm-hmm. there's some of the big ones. But I think it'd be fair to talk about kind of the three big ones. Mm-hmm. And hey, you know, I'm, I like to keep things organized. Yeah, you do. You do not. Mm-mm. And so we're, we're going to go with my organization. Okay. And uh, so the three that we're going to kind of talk about, um, and just touch briefly on, are fights, mm-hmm. finances, and feelings. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with fights. Okay. Is that Let's fine? Go. So, and I know our parents and our families probably watch this or listen to this, and, you know, we're just going to tell it. So my parents and your parents, Mm -hmm. um, because we've talked about this, um, we never saw them fight. Right. I cannot remember a time where I thought, oh my gosh, my parents are fighting. Now, this may not be your story. You may have heard your parents fight all the time, seen your parents fight all the time. But we never saw our parents fight. If my parents had a disagreement about something, they would go into another room, I'm assuming, mm-hmm. or wait till we we were asleep and discussed it. I never heard yelling. I never heard... Um, maybe they never fought. <laughs> or maybe not. I think they're probably both laughing right now because yeah. I'm sure they did. But when Rusty and I had our very first fight, I thought something was wrong with us. Yeah. I was like, wait. We're not supposed to fight because I wasn't, I didn't see that Mm. demonstrated on how to fight well because I never saw him fight. And that's not right or wrong. Mm. I think that was definitely a generational thing. We've talked about that before. You just didn't, you weren't open about those things and and sharing that with your kids. Now, I want to be sensitive to the fact that there's people listening that did not have that experience. They Mm. probably heard their parents fight a lot and that may be a hurt and a fear um going into marriage is that you know all 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 i know is fighting Mm -hmm. and i don't want to do that so there's a lot of these things that we can tell our experiences but what but what i want them to hear and what i want you guys to feel is that it's something you will have to work through yep. in your marriage yep. and discuss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's the main point of this whole thing is as you start looking at how you feel when you and your spouse argue, mm-hmm. um, you need to be able to, to stop and say, well, there's a reason why I feel this way. And you also need to give grace mm-hmm. to your spouse knowing that your spouse came from a totally different... and. And just kind of like what Heather said, it doesn't necessarily mean that because you or your spouse saw your parents fighting in front of you Mm -hmm. that you want to do it that way. You could be the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. You could be like, well, I don't ever want to fight in front of my kids because that's the way. Right. So I just, where, where we're really getting into all this is that you just need to be able to realize that so many of your beliefs and your spouse's beliefs about lots of issues Mm -hmm. come from your past. And it may be that they're pulling you in that direction to do it the same way, or Mm -hmm. it was a bad experience and you're looking to do things differently. So again, it's just a matter of talking those things out and discussing it and and offering grace because you know it's it's not your spouse's fault that they grew up in the situation that they grew up in. And so, you know, when you start mixing in kids into that, and I know we've talked about that a lot, is that we wanted our we wanted our kids to see us have arguments and disagreements Mm -hmm. Um, but we wanted to do it where we were fighting fair because there is a way to fight fair Mm -hmm. and so you know it's okay for our kids to see I mean this is the way we feel Mm -hmm. we want them to see us have arguments and disagreements because when they have them with their spouse we don't want them to think something's wrong that's right that's right so so and and how to model how to fight fair like you said and and um, and making sure that we are not that we are demonstrating the correct way to do that, that right. we're hearing each other out and we're coming to some sort of agreement. Yeah. So, yeah. And speaking of fights, probably one of the main causes of fights mm. in marriages is finances. And I'm going to talk about finances because I do all <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> okay, go. Uh, I'll be quiet for no, a while. No, <laughs> but really the, the whole point of talking about finances is because, again, 
everybody has a different way that they're wired and a different way that they grew up and this is the whole family of origin thing and so you know you may come from a from a family where uh, either your mom or your dad, one or the other, did all the finances. The other one just said, okay, tell me what to do and I'll follow along. You may have come from one where they sat down and they did they did a budget together. You may have come from a family that they didn't care about a budget at all and they just spent money and mm -hmm. then they worried about it later and they piled mm -hmm. up all kinds of debt. And mm -hmm. so there's just all of this stuff that's going on in your in your mind about finances. And like this is one of those that to me, like uh, premarital counseling, mm -hmm. you have to start at least getting on track with, mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, goodness, you know, and every, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. Rachel Cruz, Dave Ramsey's daughter, actually just wrote a book that goes in and it kind of talks about um, how everybody's wired and, and where do you stand and as far as how you're wired and the, your beliefs of finances. So it'd be a great book to read and read it with your spouse. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard them talk about it mm -hmm. on the show because I'll listen to the show all the time. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'd like to say that um, some of you may have come into, the into a marriage believing that when you have kids, you won't work. Mm -hmm. You know, you have maybe your mom never worked um, and she was able to stay home. And that's something you guys need to discuss because it may not be um, an area where your spouse is thinking that they're going to be the sole breadwinner, you yeah. know, like. So that comes into the pl into play with the finances too. And so if it's not something you've talked about or if there's that expectation there, mm -hmm. because I, I mean, like I have, I have to battle that. A lot and I think that a lot of um, moms or wives that want to be um, stay-at-home moms and which I was fortunate enough to be able to do when our kids were younger but they may not say that mm -hmm. I just think that it's so important that when you're when when you are talking about finances and and you feel disagreements about that it's just so important to talk about it and know that that you that you're dealing with a train of thought that your spouse may have had for a really long time, mm -hmm. you know, like a like a um, um, somebody growing up imagining being a stay at home mom and getting to do all those things with their child, and then all of a sudden you're in a position where you both need to work. Mm -hmm. You you're not just able to say, "I'm sorry, you got to work." You got to talk through that yeah. and be sensitive to that, and um, and and consider you know consider that they're feeling a loss mm -hmm. there. And I think uh, uh, you mentioned the, the whole generation thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, my parents didn't talk about money around no. me ever. Mine did. <laughs> and you know where I'm going. Yeah, I couldn't. We couldn't do anything at the end of the month. That's right. I need those new shoes. We had to go out to eat. Mm -mm, it's the end of the month. That, but that's yeah. the that's the gist I got. And that you could just you know, we don't have any money for that. It's fine. Just write a check. Yeah. I remember you <laughs> actually saying that. Oh, we don't have money. We'll just write a check. But we mm. didn't talk about money a lot except for that. Yeah. But, but that's the thing. I mean, I wasn't really taught a lot about money. Like, sure. and so we've made it a really a big point to try to teach our kids. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've gotten the Monopoly money out before, mm -hmm. and we've gone over the budget. They're and better it, at it. And it me. was just to teach the kids <laughs> all about our finances. <laughs> uh, I do yeah. great. She does. She does. It is a team effort, but mm -hmm. she loves for me to handle it. But that's the thing. Usually, marriages, when they combine, you have one that's the saver mm -hmm. and one that's the spender. Mm -hmm. And very rarely are two the same. Mm -hmm. And so, there's that clash again. Mm -hmm. And that's why marriages... But that, I mean, but God it plans is, it, it is. that way to balance yep. us out. Because, and I love that. Because if we were both like you, we would mm -hmm. never have any money. We'd, and we'd have be lots in of fun. Lots and lots of debt. <laughs> but if it was just like uh -huh. me, then we would mm -hmm. never have any fun mm -hmm. or spend money on anything. Nope. Okay, and then the last F is feelings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just the whole, I think of it more of, um, you know, did you ever see or watch your parents, your family of origin, express feelings mm -hmm. um, of physical feelings, mm -hmm. you know, feelings of intimacy mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, affection. Yeah, mm -hmm. affection. Obviously, not talking about things that need to be reserved for no. privacy no. and bedroom, no. but like, 
you know, did did you see that from your parents or was it something that was never even shown mm-hmm. in front of you? And all of that can bring mm-hmm. in so many emotions and feelings mm-hmm. and your beliefs of what you want to do and how you want to show affection mm-hmm. or not show affection. Okay. And so, um, again, it's just a matter of being able to stop and recognize, hey, I feel this way because of this Mm -hmm. and is it a good thing or do i need to change and that's where you get with your spouse and you say hey the reason why i feel this way because there will be times where you'll butt up like this Mm -hmm. where i mean it could even be something as simple as your wife going hey why don't you hold why aren't you holding my hand in public or why don't you ever put your arm around me Mm -hmm. in public Mm -hmm. well i mean it could be that i never saw you know never saw my dad do that or whatever Mm -hmm. i'm just giving an example and so that's something that instead of having a huge fight about, you stop and you go, well, there's a reason for that mm-hmm. because I have never seen that that's right. um, exposed to me. I've mm-hmm. never seen that demonstrated right. to me that's like right. that before. Mm-hmm. And so you stop and you talk about it. Right. I, I think the main point of this whole deal is each one of you needs to be able to take all of these different things that you're bringing into your marriage and you need to be able to you know, kind of digest it a little bit, unpack it a little bit and go, I feel this way because of this. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not good and Mm -hmm. if it's not good for our marriage, then we need to talk about it. You need to understand Mm -hmm. why, why I feel this way and why I act this way. Mm But let's try to get on the same page right, moving forward right. because this is, this is our marriage. That's right. And decide what's best for your marriage right. and your family. That's right. And that can be a compromise of the two. It can be, oh, I love how y'all did yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and go in that direction or coming up with your own new way yep. of doing things. Yep. So. Uh, you, you tell this story all the time about <laughs> oh, the cutting gosh. of the... The cutting the ham, is that what it is? Yes. Go ahead, go ahead, yes. you tell it. It's not my story. <laughs> I know, but, but it's tell still it. great. So this um this young new wife was doing Thanksgiving dinner and she wanted to do a ham. And she went and she got the ham from the grocery store and she cut off the butts. The, the, you know two ends does it have two butts it's, okay, okay. Both ends, she just cut off the ends of the <laughs> and she put it in her pan her brand new pan that she had gotten and put it in the oven and the husband said why did you cut the butts off the ham and she said well that's just how my mom did it and so she called her mom and said mom why did do we cut the ends off the ham and the mom said I don't know. That's how my mom did it. So they called the grandmother and the great-grandmother and finally figured out. They said, why do you cut the ends off the ham? And the great-grandmother just started dying out laughing and said, well, I cut the ends off the ham because I didn't have a pan big enough for the ham. And then for generations, they cut the ends of the ham off, even though the pan was plenty big. Had plenty big. Plenty big. Yeah. But that's that's how we do. We yep. bring things in because that's what they did, and that's what they did, and that's what they did. Or the opposite of I'm not bringing that right. in because I'm right. not going to do it the way. I'm not going to do it the way. I'm not going to do do it the way. But bottom line is, in a marriage, there's two of you. And there's your view and your view and the way you did it and the way you did it. And you have to come together and do what's right for your marriage and your family. Yep. And I think that that's um, last week when we talked about the communication tool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, this is so much of just communicating together Mm -hmm. to come up with what's best for you and your family. And I remember when we were doing the 12 days of Christmas or the 12 days of questions, Mm -hmm. somebody actually asked us about that because they were like, uh, you know, it's Christmas time and how are we Mm -hmm. supposed to bow? You know, if I don't want to go to there, they have expectations that their family and they have expectations and how are we going to, and that's when we said, Hey, you've got to determine what's best for you Mm -hmm. and your family. And that's how all of this is. So, And that's a really big one. I'm going to say one more thing. I know we're getting long. But that's a really big one, like how you do holidays. But do you remember we were meeting not too long ago with a couple that the the husband wanted to sit in the den and watch TV at night after work, after dinner. It was like, I just want to sit in my chair and watch TV. And the wife wanted to lay in the bed Mm -hmm. and watch TV in the bed because that's what her 
family did. Mm -hmm. And that was just two different ways. And that's so trivial. But he was like, well, I don't want to come to the bed because the bed's for sleeping. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want to come to the den because it was my bed is Mm -hmm. my my safe spot and where I want to curl up at night. And that is one of those things where that's how she did it, how he did it. And you just have to talk and you have to compromise or you have to well, watch TV in there a little while and then, you know, yeah. all the things. Or so, just, I mean, I mean, the wife may say, I, it's fine. I don't care if you're in that room right. watching that. And then, you know, when you're done, come in that's here, right. we'll be together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just, again, That's communication. a little example. Right. And then there's big examples. Right. So I just want you to see it's not just on the big things. Yeah. It's little things as well. So a challenge to you this week. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let me just issue one challenge. And as something comes up this week that causes some tension mm-hmm. between you and your spouse. Because they will. Yeah, something's going to happen. <laughs> Every week. So take a minute. It doesn't matter if you've been married one year or if you've been married 25 years. Yeah. But take a minute and think just how did your family of origin affect what is causing that tension. That's right. And it may be that it's something that has nothing to do with your family of origin, but chances are there's something underlying there that's that that at least plays some part in it. So take a moment for yourself and think about that and then share it with your spouse yeah. and say, hey, the reason why I kind of act this way or have felt this feel this way about mm-hmm. this is because this is yeah. what I saw in my family or this is what I didn't get to experience about right. whatever it is. And have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Just have a conversation and see if that kind of helps when you have those areas of tension because then you can understand each other. You can offer grace a little bit better. Yes. And then hopefully you can come to an agreement together of how That's right. you know how to resolve that conflict. So That's right. Um, Man, that was a that's kind of a tough one to unpack because there's so much to so unpack, nice. but I hope it scratched the surface a little bit so that you can just begin to see, man, marriage is hard, but there's a reason why it's hard and we can get on the same page and work that's together right. to make it fun. Absolutely. And make it work. So, yep. um, hey, thanks for leaving the reviews. Yes. We have had some great reviews on our Apple podcast. Please keep doing that because it, it when it's so crazy, we you can go and look at the numbers and when somebody leaves a review like the next day, the numbers go up for the number of people that have watched it yeah. because we don't know how it all works, but somehow <laughs> we have been told that as you rate and review right. the podcast, more people get an That's opportunity right. to watch it. So next time, until That's next right. time, we will see you then.